here, having them playing all the time, definitely going to be an advantage as time goes on. Map number two in the series will be Horizon Lunar Colony. We'll get to see, I know we saw Rascal play a little bit on this for London when they wanted to bring the May out. Not in the lineup McCree here too. as well, yeah. he played a bit of. Um, Rascal's McCree was completely exploited against the Los Angeles Valiants on this particular map. So, you know, they're going to go for a little bit of a different look this time around. Well, well I, a Prophet's in, so you can have him obviously play, you know, Genji or Tracer. Bird Ring can play Widowmaker. You can also have him play Junkrat if you wanted to run like Arisa Roadhog Junkrat. So, just gives you a little bit of uh, more versatility. Yeah, I mean, our initial projections with that Bird Ring would be probably the most frequent inclusion in this roster based on his flexibility and, and general impact on the game. Well, he just plays like the high impact heroes at like a very high level in terms of just like overall players in the league. So it's like kind of odd to take him out and put in other players where you know, you know you have somebody who's really consistent as well, right? I mean, it's really kind of rare to see Birdering have like an off game or an off map. So I don't really see him come out of the lineup too often. On the side of the Shanghai Dragons, there will be no changes in their lineup here. We're on the attacking side here. and We've seen the Shanghai Dragons, uh, you know, play around a little bit with the, the Sombra pick on this map. Uh, we've seen them try and work that one in. And, you know, a lot of teams are starting to figure that out now as well. Like, defending teams are sitting off of the point, And they're actually defending their health packs instead of the point itself just to try and shut down the impact of that Sombra. But London Spitfire here, I mean, we can see what they're going to go for here. This is pretty anti-dive in terms of its composition, right? You don't want to dive a Junkrat or a Roadhog. You gotta get past, you know, Gesture Shield in some sort of way. So it's pretty tricky to try and get around this team. And then Bird Ring's out there just hitting shots, or at least that's the plan. You have a few options if you're the Shanghai Dragons. You can dive straight to the point. You can play like a quad tank. They're going to actually play Moira Lucio Sombra. So interesting. Sombra usually played like in competitive play at this level as more of like a secondary support as the DPS. But this time we're going to see Undead play Sombra as strictly secondary DPS role. Undead with most deaths on this map. And Shusha with the leaks, which is really interesting given that he's often in that tank role. Now the point's being tickled, so the Spitfire need to keep track of this and not give away a free third of the point whilst they're trying to deal with the assault at the gates, as it were. But Prophet's gone down to one dead on the point. It's going to give him a tick now. The Spitfire have to go back and respond. There's no time to waste. And they get there, but look how much progress has been given over. That's all off the back of Undead winning the 1v1 against Prophet. The Spitfire can push back a little bit now, Matt. You can see it's not quite 66%. That's still annoying. Oh. Nice halt and a hook there as Fury finishes off 5 King. And something obviously you expect here for uh, Shanghai is that oh, well, these players are really out of position. Now. They should get oh, figured out. He'll get profit for the second profit time. again, but it's going to get res right back up. I mean, all these players are dropping on your side of the map. Close is dead. Might be something to this one. Depends what the Shanghai Dragons are doing while this is happening. Hagapin down towards Deer here. This could be something. Fury now taking a breather. A lot of the Shanghai Dragons are bearing down upon him. He needs to get back to the protective shield here on the point. Hulk thrown in. That actually prevents the jump coming in. Roshan was trying to get over the shield, but instead got brought crashing down to the ground. And now the Reptile's going to claim Deer. Jessen now can just refresh the shield, and the Cold Essence isn't really given too much attention here. Gesha has to respect this, but Fury just dips in, gets himself a hook. The Shanghai Dragon Spats just gonna reset. Just chill. Yeah, and they were able to catch London off guard because, you know, obviously they expect Tracer to be on the point in London, right? The uh, dancing around the point, but Undead playing Sombra obviously can go self, go invisible. They don't expect both players to be there at yeah. that time. That's how you're able to get that first pick rather quickly. We have seen this happen actually. Sometimes the Tracer goes to the point and gets in like a long range 1v1 with the Junkrat, and then the Sombra comes in under, under the stealth, right? So you can't see her, then she appears and bursts down with the help of the Tracer of that Junkrat. So you get a 2v1. It's pretty scary and you've got to be ready for it. There's an EMP up here and a Pulse Bomb for the well, Shanghai Dragon. Here's the thing, I mean, you connect the EMP for Shanghai and you, you know, get a good sound barrier. You still have Closer with Valkyrie on the other side. So Closer does use Valkyrie. There's the EMP. Don't know if he got caught inside of it or not. Then he would not be able to use the rest. He actually brings back Hagapoon, brings back Fury. So this is a fight where London has the clear advantage. And this is where you miss having a Mercy here, Mitch, right? You know, you want Mercy on your side. Obviously, Valkyrie's such a powerful ultimate ability in the current patch, right? A little bit different on live. Finishing out stage one on the previous patch. 
you need Mercy on your team right there. You see the effect she has, bringing two players back to life after you wasted so many ultimates to make that happen on the side of the Dragons. Okay, so the Shanghai Dragons make the executive decision to switch the Lucio out of their composition. They now lack the speed, but they obviously have the potential to resurrect, although if you're attacking on this map, it sometimes can be hard to find a safe zone in order to channel that ability. He is just tickling Fury a little bit here. Has a pulse bomb, but knows that he needs to try and draw out the cooldown or take a breather before he can even bother sticking that one down. Self-destruct on the high ground, and Fury's just going to take five and back away from that one. In the meantime, Roshan missed his jump. He's on the low ground. He got picked up by Birdring. This puts Fury in a bit of a compromising position now. He's a little bit closer to that Diva than he otherwise would have liked to have been, but that's a double for probably Fair oh. both supports. Didn't even need a rip time for that one, by the way. Just chilling. And now Shanghai, not really sure what they're doing. I think they need to be reminded that they still got to capture that first point. Well, maybe, this will stagger them. Yeah, I mean, maybe if there was a player back there for London, like, you'd go finish them off, but you know, Fury can just keep looking back towards his spawn, just waiting for Dia to come on in. So, Dia okay. will on, fall now at distance at the hands of Murdering. This is not going well for oh, the Shanghai Dragon. They're not going to even touch the point. Roshan gets taken down. They are at least contesting. Oh, no! It's a nightmare! It's five to get free fill. When are even in position to help their team, by the way? And we're just adding insult to injury now with Prophet giving a big old riptide. That's how you burn rubber, ladies and gentlemen. And they, and they go to Widowmaker after playing Sombra for a bit, which is interesting, right? You're going to try and out-Widow Birdring, who's standing behind the Orisa shield. It's uh, nearly impossible to do. Prophet able to make a big impact on Junkrat and 32% of overall team damage. We can take a look at replay of this rip tire, but look at this position that Undead is sniping into. Uh, <laughs> uh, Concussive mine. That, that won't happen in stage two. <laughs> As, uh, but you saw the position that Undead was in there, right? You kind of saw his silhouette through the screen. It, it, he can't really get much damage there on Widowmaker because you're just standing behind the Orisa shield. So uh, that's where you would have liked to see Shanghai potentially like either go you know, quad tank, right? And just play on the point. And maybe even stay with like Sombra, like something like Sombra Moira, or you know, and then just have like Lucio play a tank and just go quad tank. Uh, there's a lot of other things they could have done there. Uh, the Widowmaker probably not the best of options. We'll see what the dragons want to go for here. It's unlikely the Spitfire are going to try and fight them directly. The idea about attacking on this map as the offensive team is to provoke a response from the defenders. Force them to move out of position, force them to come to you. The defenders can't sit on the point and wait for you because they're literally putting themselves into a box. So they have to sit up on the high ground and try and exploit the fact that you have a lot of this open no man's land to cross. And they need to force them off that advantageous position to deal with you on the point. And uh, we saw from the uh, previous round when Fury was on Roadhog a few times, just a little bit of a cool note. It's like, he's playing so aggressive in the mid, even with the Widowmaker on the other side, and he just kept turning his back, so you just can't land those like easy headshots head right. against him. So Shanghai here on defense, you're going to have Five King play Mercy, you're going to have Free Field play Ana. So Ana obviously can provide a lot of great healing. If London tries to dive up to the top, right, you hit them with a Biotic Grenade, who is the nano boost target here, though, for the Shanghai Dragon? Like, I shoot shot playing the Diva. I mean, maybe you can give your nano to Junkrat as T actually just deletes profit here at the beginning. So that's likely a trap set up there as well. Yeah, I mean, and the thing is, the Spitfire don't want to dive the dragon. So, wanna, so Anna has a fair bit of safety there in that case. Like, she's probably not going to get leapt upon until she commits to the low ground. And we'll see how we gesture here on this Winston. No, we'll look to try and test it. I think what you're looking at here is to see if London can create sight lines for Bird Ring. It's a lot like how you know, Undead had that. Undead was just plowing damage into the Orisa shield. They were on offense. It's like, how do you create space for Bird Ring to make an impact on the Widowmaker? As you see the push coming in here for London. Zushara essentially was on his own for the first part of that fight. Now he's been joined, flanked by the rest of the Dragons. Prophet decides just to step off the point for the time being and closely gets a little bit. Well, too close to Shusha there. Picks him off with that Diva. The Widow battle is won by Undead. And Prophet fancies hanging around. He knows a couple clips of damage into tanks would give him that pulse bomb that could break the dragons apart. The dragons, not only do they have to play close because of the presence of Orisa, they have to play close on their point. This is value town for pulse bombs. They also have Undead out of the equation because Birdring wins that fight. He knows that there's so many members for the London Spitfire just hanging around that left-hand side. He's going to be pretty much him. trapped in the spawn. Yeah, you can see now the support is split up for the rest of the Dragons. And that's going to be the EMP coming out. Hagapun finds 5 tick immediately. That's the pulse bomb we were looking for. Roshan is down all four feet flat on the floor for him. 
Tusha has nothing else he can really do but try and get that resuit self destruct zone away, but he can't get back in. Just a new had to be trying to get back in the mech. Undead was so low. A profit all he had to do was give him a little bit of a tickle here. The Shanghai Dragons got no players near the point whatsoever. They let themselves down with a weak attack, and the Spitfire are more than happy to capitalize. Blinking, you'll miss it, Matt. You know, we've seen some close games from Shanghai in their previous matches. I think uh, the London Spitfire just coming in here today making a big statement. You know, our game against Seoul, obviously, we looked great.